ألف لام را تلك آيات الكتاب المبين إنا أنزلناه قرآنا عربيا لعلكم تعقلون So inshallah, let's continue. We don't have a lot of... Uh time left but we have a lot of verses still left and so we're going to try to cover as much as we're able to cover and we're going to be skipping some some verses inshallah we're trying to benefit from it as much as we can so <clears throat> now the person who is uh, is who the person who is working for the king remember he was in prison with prophet yusuf alayhi salam and he hears about the dream and so he tells the the king And he says, he says, أَنَا أُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِتَأْوِيلِهِ فَأَرْسِلُونَ I will tell you, let me tell you. <clears throat> I will tell you what the interpretation is. So I mean, فَأَرْسِلُونَ Send me away. In other words, give me some time. And so, he is, uh, he goes to Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam. And he comes to Prophet Yusuf, remember, seven years later. Seven years ago, Prophet Yusuf tells him, when you go and see the king, mention my situation to him. What does he do? He doesn't mention anything. So, he comes and he says, Yusuf, Yusuf, oh, trustworthy one. In other words, oh, Yusuf, my buddy. Like, yeah, now you come back, right? Aftina fi sab'i baqaratin siman ya'kuluhunna sab'un ijaf. Tell us the interpretation of this dream. So he mentions to him the dream of the, the king. So when he mentions to him the dream of the king, the Messenger of Allah, when he's telling this story, he says, I am amazed at the patience of Yusuf. I'm amazed at the patience of Yusuf. If I would, if I were in his shoes, in other words, that was not me, that was me, I would have, I would not, I would have sent him back to test, speak about my situation before I told him the interpretation of the dream. Right? But you know, I'm amazed at the patience of Yusuf. You know, because this guy, you asked him for a favor, okay? And he does nothing. But Prophet Yusuf is patient. And he tells him many ways. And so he says, so this is the interpretation of dream. قَالْ تَزْرَعُونَ سَبْعَ سِنِينَ دَأَبَ Not only does he tell him in the interpretation of dreams, but he also, one of the things that Allah has given Prophet Yusuf is that not only the interpretation of dream, but the interpretation of dreams along with what to do. Along with the wisdom to know, to teach people what to do as a result of that dream. So he says, The interpretation of a dream means, of course, that you have seven prosperous years. And then you will have seven difficult years, seven lean years. So, what do you, what do you need to do? تَزْرَعُونَ سَبْعَ سِنِينَ دَأَبَا Continue to harvest like you normally do. فَمَا حَصَدْتُمْ But whatever you harvest, فَذَرُوهُ فِي سُمْبُلِهِ Leave everything in its stock or grain. Leave all the grains in the stock. Or leave all the corns on the cob. Whatever you... Just leave, leave, leave them the way they... Why? Because if you leave the grains in its place, you don't take it out, you can store it for a longer period of time. So look at the wisdom of Prophet Yusuf. He's teaching them. He said, don't take it out. Don't take the grains out. Leave them in their stocks and store them that way so they can last a longer amount of time. Now he's teaching them. He's teaching him. And he says, this is what you go back and tell the king. His, the meaning is this, but this is also what you should do. <coughs> and don't eat except for a small amount. Or except store it except for a small amount that you need to eat. Because, <laughs> Because there will be seven difficult years, seven lean years, that will, as a result of these lean years, you, it will devour all of those 
<coughs> all that which you have stored up except for a small amount in which you carefully stored away. <coughs> okay, so how many years has he mentioned now of the dream? Seven years of prosperity, seven years of hardship, right? Now, there is another year. So the 15th year. ثُمَّ يَأْتِ بِمْ بَعْدِ ذَلِكَ عَامٌ فِيهِ يُغَاثُ النَّاسُ وَفِيهِ يَعْصِرُونَ And then there will come a year in which you will receive an abundance amount of rain. And in it, the people will be able to press wine also and make... In other words, it's, they don't just need... that. They have so much that they don't just keep it for the staple food, but they can be, they're, they're able to press wine and make olives or you know, olive oil and things like that. In other words, this, the, the, the 15th year or the 8th year after the hardship will be a very prosperous year. Where did Prophet Yusuf get this from? Was it in the dream? Was it in the dream? Is there anything mentioned in the dream of an 8th year after or a year after uh, this, the 15th year? Is there anything mentioned of that? In the dream at all? There's nothing there. Specific, direct, directly. But this shows the wisdom and knowledge of Prophet Yusuf. He knows that the eighth year has to be a year of an abundance amount of rain. Why? Because for a drought to end, a drought this severe cannot end with a regular with a year of regular rainfall, no. The year that will follow this drought in order for it to end, because we know it's going to end, that means that eighth year is very prosperous. And that's a year in which there will be an abundance amount of rain, more than usual. He got that from deduction. From, from what? From experience, from knowledge from reflection and from thinking, and this is also what Allah gave him, wisdom. And so he's able to give them even extra information based on what he knows of modern facts or the facts of the apparent facts that he has taken in, in, into consideration. So now, وَقَالَ الْمَلِكُ بِهِ The man comes back and tells the king, and then the king says, now why, you know, remember this servant, does he mention about Yusuf? He mentions nothing about Yusuf at all. He's trying to get the credit because he says, Ana una bi'ukum. I'm going to tell you. Just give me a day off, right? I'm going to tell you, just give me a day off. But the king's also smart. If you need a day off, that means you went somewhere. Who told you? So he informs him that it's Joseph or Yusuf. And then he says, go bring him to me. Bring that person whom you ask. I want to see him. But now, now the king, the king is sending his guards. The king is bringing Yusuf out of prison. Okay? The king sends his people and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلَمَّا جَاءَهُ الرَّسُولُ قَالَ ارْجِعْ إِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ And when the messengers came, when the people came to take him out of prison, where is he taking them out to? Where, I mean, where are they taking him out to? Is he going to be free in the land and now he's free, he can do anything he wants? No. They're going to take him and bring him to the palace. The king wants him. It's like someone is in prison in the UK and you're going to be taken out. But it's not, it's just a regular release where you're going to be released and free. No, no. You know, the queen wants to see you. Right? Or the most powerful person in the country or the president wants to see you. What would you do? You would get out quickly, right? Now Yusuf, alayhi salam. Prophet Yusuf, he says, 
Go back to your Lord. Go back to the king. And ask him, ask him about the about the, the, the situation about concerning the women who cut their hands. In 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 alim. And surely Allah, my Lord, knows uh, of his. Um, of their, their plots. Surely Allah knows of their plots. My Lord knows of, his, of their plots. And so here, first of all, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi when he told of this, of this incident, he said, I am amazed at the patience of Yusuf. If the, if, if the Messenger came to try to take me out of prison to go back to, to, to go see the king, I would have gone out faster than anyone. I would have been out already. But you know, Yusuf didn't go out. He said, go back to the king and talk to him first. Why? Because remember the last time that man left, how many years did he spend? Seven years. There's no guarantee there is anybody coming back. Okay? And now you have an opportunity to get out of prison. There's no guarantee someone's going to come back and take you out. And now he says, no, I'm staying here. I'm not going anywhere. I want you to go and clarify the situation first. Go tell the king. Ask him about this first. And then I'll come, you know, do that first. And so, the Prophet himself said, I'm amazed at, at Yusuf. The patience of Yusuf. I would have, he said, I would have been out that door. <laughs> I, the messenger, our messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa said that. I would have been out that door when that messenger came to take me out. And why wouldn't you be <laughs> going to see the most powerful man in the land? Not just going out free in the streets only. And so Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam doesn't leave prison, but he, he tells them to clarify the matter first concerning the woman, the situation with the woman. And so what is the, the king then calls the woman over and he says, What is the matter with you concerning? Uh, Yusuf, he's speaking to the woman. Now he's gathered all those, the, all the women. The, remember, these are the, of course, not all the women. The women who were there, and the, who know the situation, who know the circumstances, and these were the wealthy women, the wives of the ministers, of course. قالت امرأة العزيز الآن حص حص قلنا حاشا لله. So the woman they say حاشا لله. أعوذ بالله ما علمنا عليه من سوء. We don't know anything, uh, anything that's bad about Yusuf at all. In other words, there's no, he has done no wrong. قالت امرأة العزيز And then the wife, قالت امرأة العزيز The wife of the Aziz says, who, the wife of the Aziz, some of the scholars said the, the, the minister has passed away. In other words, her husband has passed away already. And she says, الآن حص الحق Now, the truth has come out. أنا راودته عن نفسي وإنه لمن الصادقين. I was the one who tried to seduce him, and surely he was. He was amongst those who were truthful. Now you might ask, why would she do that? Why is she admitting in front of everybody right now? And people might wonder, why are you coming out right now? <coughs> and so she tells the reason. ذَٰلِكَ لِيَعْلَمَ أَنِّي لَمْ أَخُنْهُ بِالْغَيْبَ I am coming out right now so that you might see, I don't know what the translation here, but the translation might be a little bit different. I'm, going, I'm just giving you the stronger of the opinions, okay? A relation to what it means. Why is she coming out? She says, I am coming out لِيَعْلَمَ أَنِّي لَمْ أَخُنْهُ بِالْغَيْبَ So that my husband will know, that everyone will know that I did not cheat. I mean, I did not, I did not um, cheat. In other words, I cheat on him. And, um, For surely Allah does not guide the plots of those who plot or who, who cheat. And so, why is she doing this? Why is she saying this? She's saying this because she's coming out because she's trying to say that, yes, I did try to seduce him, but he didn't do anything. 
Now, why am I coming out? Because I want to let everyone know that even though I tried to seduce him, nothing happened. Nothing happened. Yes, I did try to seduce him. And the reason for that is, وَمَا أُبَرِّئُ نَفْسِي I am not saying that I'm totally innocent, okay? وَمَا أُبَرِّئُ نَفْسِي I'm not saying that I'm totally innocent. إِنَّ النَّفْسَ لَأَمَّارَةٌ بِسُوءٌ But you know, our desires, the nafs, cause to do evil always. So she's trying to blame her nafs. Saying the nafs is always calling to evil. I'm not saying I'm totally innocent. I am coming out just to let people know that he, and let my husband know also that even though I did try to seduce him, nothing happened. Nothing happened. And he is chaste. And that's why I'm coming out. I'm not totally innocent, yeah. But I am just coming out to clear, clarify the situation and to re- let people realize that nothing happened between us. And in the nafs la amaratun bisu illa ma rahima rabbi except for whom my lord has mercy upon inna rabbi ghafurur rahim surely my lord is all forgiving most merciful so now there are there are have you heard of stories that prophet yusuf married zulaikha or married the wife of the aziz is that true or not would that be appropriate for somebody like the the status of Yusuf to marry someone like Zulaikha. Isn't that, a few, isn't that a little bit strange, right? Well, you might see some books of tafsir who are taking from the Israeliyat or hadith that are very, very weak that they mention, but it's not true. There's no proof that Prophet Yusuf married the wife of the Aziz. And, per, and honestly, it's not appropriate for someone like Yusuf to marry someone like her. To marry someone like her. And so where did it come from? Some of the, most of the scholars have said it came from the story t- storytellers who tried to spice up the thing a little bit. You know, they're just adding a little, little bit of spice and trying to <laughs> sweeten things more or uh, put extra things that are not there. And Allah knows best. Allah knows best. So now everything is cleared up. But what has come out from all of this? Now the king has heard about Yusuf. The king has heard about Yusuf. What does he know about Yusuf? Yusuf is very wise. Yusuf is very honest. Yusuf is a very good man. Everyone is saying that Yusuf is really good. And so what does the king say this time? The king says, وَقَالَ الْمَلِكُ اُتُونِي بِهِ أَسْتَخْلِصُ لِنَفْسِي The king again tells the messenger, his guards, to go, go and bring Yusuf here now. In other words, tell him the situation is all cleared up now. Bring Yusuf here. Notice the first time he said, وَقَالِ الْمَلِكُ اُتُونِي بِهِ The king said, bring him to me. Now he adds something. وَقَالِ الْمَلِكُ اُتُونِي بِهِ أَسْتَخْلِصْهُ لِنَفْسِي I'm going to take him for myself. In other words, someone of that status, someone like that, someone that honest, someone that exceptional, someone that extraordinary, I got to have him on my team. You understand? Do you see how, what kind of person Prophet Yusuf was? Everyone knows how helpful and beneficial he is. And that's how we Muslims should be in a non-Muslim society. So that when BBC, when ABC, CBC, whatever it is that's speaking ABCs and, and, the, and the soup <laughs> and everything that's there's all speaking about this and that, bashing Islam, your neighbors will know your co-workers will know and your classmates will know BBC is lying. CBS and especially Fox is lying. Because I know a Muslim. I have a neighbor. And that Muslim is the most honest person I've ever seen. That Muslim is the most helpful person I've ever, I, that I know. You guys are lying. Islam does not teach what you're mentioning about Terrorism and things like that and backwardness. No, these guys are the best people. And it will not matter if you be the best Muslim that you can be. If we all be the best Muslims we can be and be, the, be extraordinary, it will not matter what people say about Islam. 
because your action speaks so loud, I can't even hear what you're saying. It will not matter what they say. And that's the type of Muslim we should be. And that's the type of Muslim Prophet Yusuf was. And so the king wanted him for himself because he, he was so extraordinary. He was so honest, so, so, you know, so helpful in all matters. And so now Yusuf is brought to the king. And you know how some people, some people, when you hear about them, like it's, you know, you hear about them, you say, wow, I wish I could meet that person. And then when you meet them, oh man, he ain't all that. Right? You know, you hear all kinds of things. And then when you actually see them or talk to them, oh, <laughs> it was all talk. You know, he ain't all that. But when Yusuf, he was all that and more. He was all that and more. Listen to what the king said. The king then, when he, now the king has an opportunity to talk to him. He's heard about Yusuf already. He hasn't talked to him yet. Now he has spoken to him. After he speaks to him, he says, man, you all that and more. Right? You understand? say, you all that and more. قال إنك اليوم لدينا مكين أمين. Wow. The king is impressed. And he says, إنك اليوم today with us. Notice he لدينا. He's a king. He's by himself. But he says us. Remember the royal we we spoke about? Because he's a king. They speak like this. You with us today. مكين أمين. You are well established, fully trusted. In other words, you now from, from this day on, you're going to be with me, fully established, and I will trust you totally. So now he's earned the trust of the king, and the king is saying, whatever you tell me to do, you know, I'm going to do it. Because I trust you. I know the kind of person you are. And then Prophet Yusuf, being the kind of person that he was, he always wanted to help society, help the people. And so he's taking the initiative right now. He says, normally you do not ask for um, status and leadership and so forth, but the people are in need. And he has, he, now he has the opportunity to help. And he says, <laughs> Put me in charge of the storehouses of the land. In other words, make me the minister of finance. Take care of all, all the wealth of, 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 of Egypt. Because I, will be, I know how to do it. And I am alim. I know how to do it and I am trustworthy. I can do it. I know how. And so, where does, how does Yusuf know how to do all this? Wasn't he a slave? How, does, how can he take care of the finances of, of Egypt? How? Where did he learn all this from? All the politics and speaking people. What? Why does he know all this? He grew up in the house of the minister. He grew up in that house. He knows all of it. He knows all the finances of Egypt and what, what goes on. He grew up in the palace. Allah put him there for a reason to also learn all of those things. He knows how to do all of that. He's qualified, fully qualified, fully trusted. And thus Allah, Allah elevates his status. And thus Allah has established Yusuf on, land, on the land. You know, remember he's in prison, right? He was in prison. He's in prison. And then he comes out of prison he doesn't just, he's not just a normal person. He comes out of prison, now he becomes the most powerful person in Egypt. How is he the most powerful person in Egypt? The king has given him all powers. The king right now is like the queen of England. <laughs> who has all the power, who does everything? It's Prophet Yusuf, alayhi <laughs> salam. He's the most powerful man in Egypt. And not only is he the most powerful man in Egypt, he's the most powerful man in Egypt and the surrounding areas because there's a drought that's coming. 
and he's in charge of the wealth of Egypt. And the people are going to come to Egypt. They're going to need the, store, the food of Egypt. And he's in charge of all of that. Allah, from prison, from the well to the prison, and now he's the most powerful man in the land. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that's how we establish people, Yusuf on earth. What does that mean? It means he's free to roam wherever he wants now. He's not, from, he's not in the well where he can't go anywhere. He's not, in, he's not a slave where he can't do anything. He's not a prisoner where he can't go places. He can go anywhere. He can go anywhere he wants. Okay, I want you to imagine yourself in this situation. In his case, what would you do now? What would you do? First thing you would do is what? You are the minister of finance. In charge of Egypt. Fully respected, fully established. You have all the wealth of Egypt in your hands. You are a free man, not only a free man, you're, you're it. You're the guy. What do you do? If you were here, if you were in his situation, what would you do? You would buy a home? <laughs> you don't need to buy a home, you got a palace. Okay. We know who needs a home, okay? <laughs> okay, listen. <laughs> Where's your father? He's a poor man. He's a poor man. Where are your brothers? Back home. The drought has hit them hard. Drought. What would you do? Wouldn't you go to them? Wouldn't you go to them? Say, send a messenger, or you go yourself. Father, we made it big. <laughs> we made it big. Brothers. You never thought I could do it, huh? <laughs> we made it big, guys. Come on. We're moving away from the desert. We're going to the palace. Right? Wouldn't you do something like that? Yusuf didn't. Why? Inshallah, we'll get to it, inshallah. Why? Allah will mention, inshallah. Not directly, indirectly. Okay? We know, we know why. Now, the, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, نُصِيبُ بِرَحْمَتِنَا مَنْ نَشَاءُ We shower our mercy upon whom we will. وَلَا نُضِيعُ أَجْرَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ This is very important. We will never make the efforts of the muhsinin go to waste. In other words, be good, be sincere, be the best. For whatever, whatever good you do, you will be rewarded for it in this life before the hereafter. Just know that. It might not be immediate, but you will get your reward in this life and the hereafter. So be sincere. Don't disobey Allah. Be strong. Be firm. Be honest. Be the best Muslim you can be. Be patient in the obedience of Allah. Be patient in abstaining from, the sin, abstaining from sins. And be patient when a calamity befalls upon you. For any effort that you may put, even though no one sees it, Allah sees it and He will reward you graciously. But the reward of the hereafter, But the reward of those and the hereafter is better for those who believe and who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And now, seven years of drought. The seven years Oh, sorry, the seven years of prosperity have passed and Yusuf has taken care of the storehouses. Now why does Yusuf want to take care of the storehouses? Why? Because he wants people to not suffer because there's corruption in Egypt. You know the politicians are corrupt. So in order for everything to, to run smoothly, he has to take charge himself of the storehouses and so he's done a very, very fine job to the point where Egypt now has a surplus. And people are suffering. And so people are hearing about Egypt in that you can come to Egypt and you can buy grains and you can survive this drought 
if you bring in your wealth and money, you can buy. So Egypt becomes even wealthier. So look how much benefit is Egypt benefiting from? The wisdom and the honesty of Yusuf a.s. And the knowledge of Yusuf a.s. Do you see? So Egypt is in a position of prosperity when everyone else is suffering. Egypt is the only nation and state at that time now because nobody was prepared for these seven years of difficulties, but Egypt was prepared because those seven years of prosperity, they, uh, they, they, uh, Prophet Yusuf salam made sure that they stored enough food. And then the brothers are suffering. The family of Yaqub is suffering and the brothers come. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَجَاءَ Yusuf." The brothers of Yusuf come. فَدَخَلُوا alayhi, And so they enter. Why do they enter Egypt? They enter Egypt because they are in need. They are starving. They are suffering. The whole family is suffering. Because the children of Prophet Yaqub have children also now. And they probably have children also. It's a large family. It's a huge family. And they don't have enough food. They, don't have enough, they do not have enough grains. And so the brothers come to, you, to, to Yusuf. But they don't know that Yusuf is in charge. And they come and they fa'arafahum. Yusuf, when he sees his brothers, he knows. He knows them. Why? Because Yusuf was a young boy. Remember, now he's, an, he's a fully grown man. How old is he now? We said in prison he was... How many? 30 years, right? And now, seven years, and seven years, additional 14... I mean, seven years have passed. Seven years of prosperity have passed. And now in the middle of that seven, probably the second, third, probably ten years now more. Ten more years, right? With including the prison, so he's, how many? Full grown man. When someone is ten and then they return forty, do you recognize them? Most likely not, right? So the, he has changed. But they, because they were older than him, they didn't change much. And so, but he, rec- he realizes, he knows them. فَعَرَفُهُمْ وَهُمْ لَهُ مُنْكِرُونَ but they themselves look at him. You know what munkirun means? Munkirun means you deny something. As if they say, wow, that face looks familiar. Nah. <laughs> no way. Right? Because that's if you say, couldn't be possible. <laughs> that's the high, that's the most, well, he looks familiar, but he's the most powerful man in Egypt. It can't be Yusuf. There's no possibility. So, right? There's no possibility. There's no way. So like, like they just brushed it aside. And they had no idea that this was actually... Yusuf alayhi salam, their own brother. And so, وَلَمَّا جَهَزَهُمْ بِجَهَازِهِمْ But Yusuf alayhi salam, now he's helping them to store the grains. And so, uh, sorry, he's, they're bringing items to trade in. And, but Yusuf is very just. So what does he do? He doesn't, he doesn't give the grains to everyone as much as they want. No! You have, for each person... He gives a ration for per family. So the head of the household comes and you get your ration only. Why does he do that? Because if he doesn't do that, the rich people will take advantage of the situation and they will buy a lot of grain, bring back to their land and then raise the price of it and become even richer. And then the poor people are still suffering. Do you understand? So he says, if you want the grain, I will only give you enough for that ration for your household. And the head of the household has to come. And I'll give you that ration. You can only buy this amount. And so they bring forth and they, now they have, do they have enough? The brothers of Yusuf, do they have enough? How many are they that are coming? Ten. Because Benjamin is not here. The Prophet Yaqub does not allow Benjamin to come with them. So they're not going to have enough. There's gonna be, they're going to be missing one ration. If Benjamin were to come, they would have more. But they can't buy, they need 11 rations. It's a large family, but they don't have enough, but that's all they can get. And so they come, and also he helps them out. Prophet Yusuf salam helps them out, and he asks them, he says, he says, who are you guys? And they say, we are the children of Yaqub. And so they're telling, Prophet Yusuf knows who they are, but he's asking them. He says, well, how many, how many are you? Say, well, we're ten. But there's another brother that, oh, well, we're actually, we're, 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 we're 12 altogether. 
Uh, our brother, um, our brother, we had a brother who died in the desert. Who was that? Yusuf. We had a brother who died in the desert. And then there's another brother, his younger brother. His younger brother's back with his father. With his father. And so we're the children of Yaqub, and they're telling about themselves. And then Prophet Yusuf, alayhi salam, he says, he says to them, he says, listen, I'm not going to give you any more. The next time you come, you will not get any more unless you bring your brother. Why? Why does he do that? Because he tells them, how do I know that you're not spies? How do I know you're not spies? How do I know you're, not tr- you're, you're truthful? If you are truthful, then you'll bring your brother with you. If you don't, you'll never get anything else. Even when the next time you come, you'll not get anything else. Because then I'll know you'll be suspicious. In other words, if they, that means you're lying. You're telling about this and that, so I don't trust you. If you bring the other brother, I know you'll be truthful. So the next time, you better bring your brother. So, Allah subhanahu, so Prophet Yusuf wants, him to, wants, wants them to bring their brother. Who is it? Who is it that they want to bring? Ben Yamin. So now, when, he come, when, they, when they go back home, when they go back home, <clears throat> Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam puts their belongings back. Puts the well, you know, all the things that they traded in for the grains. He puts it back in there, in, in the, on the camel, or inside the grains, with the grains, with the load. Why? Why does he do that? Because he knows that they're poor. And also, if he, they don't have anything to trade back, they're not going to come back again. They still, first of all, they don't have enough food yet. They're going to have to come again, but they're not, if they don't have anything to trade for the grains, then they won't. So he's giving them their money back. And he, or he's, he's giving them their money back without them even knowing. Without them even knowing. So when the brothers go home, immediately they, they go to their father. فَلَمَّا رَجْعُوا إِلَىٰ أَبِيهِمْ قَالُوا يَا أَبَانَا مُنِعَ مِنَّ الْكَيْلِ Oh father, they say, oh father, we have been prevented from our ration. We are not given our ration. So we were not given our ration. Why did they say that? Did they get their ration? They did say they they did get their ration, but what they're saying is that, you know, they're they're not really lying. You know, in other words, we're not going to get our ration. But they want to make the situation more, you know, just 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 to to make sure that next time they're able to bring Benjamin. Okay, they want to secure the situation, make sure that they're able to bring Benjamin. So they said. So the father says, "Why? That we're not going to get our ration if." Unless we, we take Benjamin with us. Unless we take Benjamin with us. Next, what do they say? Do you remember these words? Surely we will take care of him. Surely we will take care of him. They want to take Benjamin. The father thinks, what does the father think right now? The father thinks they have nothing to eat. They didn't bring any grains because they didn't tell them that they got some grains. All they did when they came, they said, we don't have anything. We have been prevented from our ration. We didn't get our ration. You have to send Benjamin. So the father is, you know, you know the Prophet ﷺ said, لَا يُلَّغُ الْمُؤْمِنْ مِنْ جُهْرٍ وَاحِدٍ مَرَّتَيْنِ A believer is never bitten from the same snake hole twice. And now when Benjamin, when Prophet Ya'qub hears these words, what does it remind him? These were the same words they said before they took Yusuf away. And now they're planning again to take Benjamin away? Isn't that what he's thinking? And so Prophet Ya'qub, he says, Do you think I'm going to trust you again? Just like I trusted you with his brother before? فَاللَّهُ خَيْرٌ حَافِظًا Nay, Allah is the best, who, who, the best of those who take care of us. وَهُوَ أَرْحَمُ الرَّحِمِينَ And He is the most merciful of those who show mercy. In other words, I'm not going to fall for this again. I'm not going to let you take Binyamin. I, Allah will take care of us. Allah is, uh, is the most merciful of those who show mercy. You are not taking Binyamin. I'm not going to send him away with you again. No, we're not fall for this again. That the brothers have lost hope. If they can't bring Benjamin back, they don't have enough food. 
they're going to starve. They were not able to convince their father. In fact, their father thinks they don't even have food. They didn't even unload yet. They didn't unload. They tried to make the, the, uh, escalate the situation just to make sure that they can bring Benjamin again. And so now they, okay, it's, we, they've given up hope. They have, now they're taking the, taking the load from the camel and opening up the, the grains. And what do they find? What do they find? All the money was returned to them. So now it's an opportunity to convince their father one more time. Why? That they're truthful, that they did go. And look what happened. And this man is very honest. This man is very generous. Remember, that because they told their father before that their man, this, this man that we met in Egypt is very honest. And so now, you see, now we have proof of his honesty that all of this, we're not plotting, we're not lying. That the man did ask for Benjamin. Now they have proof, and now they have the grains. Maybe we'll have the opportunity to convince our father to allow us to take Benjamin with us. So inshallah, we'll break right now.